Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the What Did He Say podcast. It's your boy Chingo Bling. Who do we have here today? Marisol. And producer Rob. What's up, everybody? You know what I'm saying? That was my radio voice. You know what I'm talking about? Versace <laughs> Mariachi is out right now. The merch is flying, selling off the mother okay, shelves. Hit up ChingoBling.com. We also have her apparel, TX.com. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to this episode's sponsor, Handy Works. It is like Uber. But for a handyman, you need some construction, you need some remodeling, they could do your floors, all kind of stuff. Hit up Handyworks, download the app, just Google them, and you'll see all the info. They're based out of Minneapolis, but I think they have contracts with handymen all over the place. Check if you uh, need some work done in your area, and they should be able to send somebody right away. That's pretty cool. That is so dope. Sass! It's kind of genius. No, for real, it really is. So, uh, where do we start with today? First of all, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's following and supporting and chiming in and uh, showing love on social media. Uh, everybody sticking up for me, as everybody wants to call me a coconut. Tio, Tio Tom, Malinche, um, what else? Uh, sellout, coconut, Boot vendido. Liquor, whatever that is. Guys, I still didn't look that up. They took it to the level of, I got a DM talking about, put your fat ass daughter on a diet. Hey, man, you know, look, look man, it's baby fat, My y'all. My toddler. Bro, really? You know, she's hey, slow, dog. She's strong. Penny is going to be such an athlete, dude. She throws a football further than my six-year-old does. <laughs> I swear to God. I she told Don that and Don was like, no, she doesn't. I go, she does. She could throw them elbow. She's pretty solid. She's strong. She's athletic. I will say that because my 12-year-old, she's a little bit more dainty. She's into dance and tiktok sure. But Vale will elbow the shit out of you. Uh, she she'll was up, be like, she'll be standing up for her big sister. Yeah, yeah. So me and uh, and Mickey were up early. I was getting ready to take Mickey to school, and then we hear like clink clink clink, like some little bell, and coming from around the corner is Penny already up on her little scooter, <laughs> and I'm like, damn, scared the hell out of me. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, do the album so far. Thank you, man. Versace so Mariachi. You know good, what I was man. telling him? I was like, I'm not just telling you this, telling you this for real, just because I'm your wife, but for real, for real, from like a fan point of view. Yeah. There's not a song on here I don't like. You know, there's always that <laughs> yes, song dude, on the CD the where you're like, hey, I'm and, and I this told shit. her I was like, those songs didn't make the cut, so that, those are the leftovers. You know, <laughs> that's my, for the the B side. You know, <laughs> I mean, B-side, even, right? even the leftovers are hotter than a lot of these try hard wanna be lyrical rappers that. You know, they just don't know how to reinvent. It's the same old, same old. And really, it's a lot of peons in the rap game, bro. That's why I miss comedy. I miss comedy so much because I- I'm getting caught up in this crab in the bucket thing. Like, I'm writing battle raps, you know? I'm, I'm over here okay. like, Mr. Cartoon, do your logo. Estevan, do your photos, you know? Such, such, Quite book your so. show. Damn. So your manager booked the show and told you it was promo. Like, I did research. Man, come on, man. People hit me with info. I'm getting research on some of these dudes. But please, man, don't try to turn me back into the old me. You know? I like that meme, too. You're like, I'm tired of, you know, rap's boring. What did you say? Rap's boring. I'm, t- I'm missing comedy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I miss comedy, man. But, you know, uh, it is what it is. We got this really powerful flu. You know, the China virus. <laughs> <laughs> it's out there. Uh, I know that's going to trigger people. They're like, Chingo doesn't think it's real. No, it's real. I just I just find it funny how they think at 1001. It's dead real. I mean, we know yeah. people that have it. You know what I'm saying? It's not like... But have you ever heard a young person debate talking about which vaccine they're going to take? I just did earlier today. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Can uh, you, you young care to person, share with us the experience? Well, uh, somebody that works with us. Okay. She's young. She, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming she has like no autoimmune, like no kind of illness type right. of stuff going on. And I was like... You know, you're young. You probably don't, like, just take your chances with the Rona instead of taking your chances with the vaccine. Yeah, just you say your immune system is 99.9% capable of fighting it versus the 94% that the vaccine is. Oh, wow. You ever, you ever think of that? That's like the basic, That's like the baseline to start I'm thinking. I'm so weird about vaccines. And I am, too. When, Penny <clears> didn't, <throat> like I said, I mean, we've talked about this on the podcast in the past. Penny didn't even follow the regular uh, vaccine schedule because I was so weird about them because they're not like they are when we were growing up. When mm-hmm. we were growing up, what is it? They, they were, were live. I think they were live. Or oh, they were dead. They were dead viruses. Yeah. Now they're they were live. dead. Now they're live. Or is it the other way? I think it's the other way. But with the coronavirus, if I'm not mistaken, they're not injecting you with any kind of actual virus. It's actually like a synthetic, like a something that's similar to it that mm. makes your body build the immune system to it. So it's not the actual uh, virus. Got it. I see. Yeah. Uh, even I then. was so weird about it. I, I, I think it was my problem that I watched that documentary called Vaxxed mm. or something like that. And it just depressed about me kids. about kids who've getting had autism issues, stuff, autism yeah. after getting their vaccines and so forth. So we made sure that with Penny's, she wasn't getting 
a whole bunch of vaccines at once. We tell you the did doc- the Sears method, right? Sears, I did the Sears, Dr. Dr. Sears, Sears method, yeah. And uh, ba- obviously, we went through a midwife, and she's all like natural, holistic. So she was kind of anti, you know, vaccine. Uh, obviously, you need, you probably need all of them or most of them, mm-hmm. like measles and shit, so the shit don't come back. Because, uh, you know, they were blaming uh, Jewish people, Orthodox Jews in New York, when the measles was coming back. They were trying to blame them. Like, yeah, they're on there looking Amish and stuff on the subway, and they don't believe in that, and they the ones spreading it. And, and, and which is a precursor to what Governor Cuomo and how they were, and de Blasio was picking on the Jewish community in New York. And that's why a lot of them started backing Trump. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know we talked about it we on, did. A, on a previous episode. Did you see that video of uh, some huge celebration that was going on in New York? It was like an underground like Jewish celebration. It might have been a wedding or something. You didn't see the video? This video? I have to look it up. Is it, it new and recent? Pretty recent, yeah. Is it an yeah. old picture? Because Governor Cuomo held up a picture of a, a wedding, a Jewish wedding, that was like four years old. And mm. he's like, see, this is this is what this is what I'm talking about right here. Oh, and no. Jewish people are like, bro, you're going to stop picking on us, bro. For real. And sure enough, you know, a lot of them voted for Trump. Mm. They did. It was a whole bunch of because the Jewish community traditionally is Democrat, right? And they're part of one of the many many groups that are like, we're not really uh, jiving with the Democrats, even though Trump is crazy and everybody thinks he's Hitler and he says crazy stuff. But it, as we talk, as we've been talking about it, episode after episode, there's a whole bunch of good stuff he did, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, real, real quick, I just have a question for even the listeners, you know. What have you guys, if anything, have taken from this whole election? That's a good question. You know, what have you taken from it besides besides uh, you hating another person because they voted another way? You, you, you know, know? B- b- uh, since we're on the subject, maybe this can add to it. Um, it's interesting how some people are so convinced that all Trump people hate Mexicans, you know, races so on and so forth so a lot of the comments i'm getting on tiktok are like um first of all you know we taking your mexican card away how dare you eat them you know you don't like them or or something like trump people don't like them or uh uh oh how can you back somebody that hates all of us and it's like or how can you, trump supporters hate us this is and that to or that. every republican hates every mexican yeah and it's like comments. uh newsflash um i mean there's a lot of latino republicans yeah, uh, I mean, it, it's just you know I, people just see stuff through their filter, and they I love they, it. they believe the hype. Yeah, you know, I'd love at some point. I think it would be cool, guys. I mean, you guys, this is y'all's podcast, so. Um, but if at some point we could connect with the guy who runs the Lexit movement, okay, just so that they could hear another point of view, someone else's perspective as to why he started the Lexit movement. What triggered or what made him snap and be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like what rabbit hole did he go through? Mm. What, you know what I'm saying? What made him kind of snap and say, this is all, wait a minute. They're not, the Democrats are not really for us. Hold on. You know, I re- I'm really curious um, as to like what started that movement. I know there was a Blexit for, for mm-hmm. the African American, for black people. And then, um, I didn't know there was an Asian one too. Mm. I discovered an Asian one. I discovered a Korean conservative account, mm. in which I never, you know what I'm saying? You just kind of, it. it's so crazy. Um, this, this whole thing has made me open my eyes to just different people, mm-hmm. start following different people and seeing different point of views um, from other people to where it made me realize that I was once the close minded person mm. when I thought that I was open minded. Yeah. I'm not sure if that makes Can sense. Can I ask you something, Rob? Because yeah. I asked Marisol this the other night and she looked like she went all the way on board. <laughs> okay. Like, like one of those, like, you better not put that on the internet because they're going <laughs> to take that out of context. Okay. But I was, I might have been high. Okay. Maybe, maybe not. <clears throat> I'm in the restroom washing up. That's, that's, that's. And I get to thinking to myself and I'm processing all this stuff. And I was like, huh, I keep hearing. Mexican Americans, people that maybe were once fans, that are basically coming at me c- kind of like this, like, you know, 
you, you sold us out. You turned your back, backstabber. You think you're better than us. This is and that. And it reminds me of like being in eighth grade or something and, and you want to hang with some white kids or you want to go to the other side of town or you trying to go to the other high school and people want to pull you back down. I, the word that came to mind was this. And this might be a, I might strike a nerve. This might be a, a ooh, like, mm -hmm. ooh, good discussion. <laughs> ooh. Yeah. Inferiority complex. Okay. Is there a little bit of that? I'm not saying all Mexicans feel, but from what I'm reading between the lines in terms of like, they don't like us. They want to deport us. They don't care about us. How dare you go with them? They hate us. And it just sounds very like victim, uh, very hurt, very, how could you leave where uh, you think you're better? You want to be white, whitewash, white privilege, Latino, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. And that's the word that popped into my head. Like, did did the powers that be, the media, Hollywood, Democrats, or whoever, who helped perpetuate an inferiority complex and then use it against us in the future? That's a good point because uh, I was reading more about, like, and I hate that, like, the word racism has been thrown around so much over the last couple of years, especially over the last couple of months, but mm -hmm. talking about racism within, like, the Latin communities, mm. and we were talking about that earlier, and I, I got into this uh, rabbit hole of uh, a few MSNBC articles, which, again, there you go, you see who's writing it, right? Mm -hmm. Where it was um, <clears throat> this Afro-Latinx movement of people that were talking about, you know, their experiences within the community, and then it led to another rabbit hole where you have these white, and I guess you're in that, uh, that, that, uh, that genre of like lighter complexed and what do they call them? Are they white? It's like white superiority Latinos, white Tino, or white, some yeah, shit. something like that. And oh, it, it, in the article you sent, it says white presenting Latinos. White presenting is what should the term use is. this time to reconcile with the privilege their light skin gives them in systems tainted with white supremacy and figure out ways to use it in a productive way. Sans said. Yeah, and, and again, it was people from other la la It's so funny. It's like you know, I just can't help but fucking laugh. What? It's a serious subject to some like, people, but it's like one minute you're saying we're all oppressed, next minute you're saying I got privilege. Anyway, look. So Rob sent me this. It was from NBC News. Take that into consideration. It's already from NBC yeah. News. Yeah, but it's but it's comical because yeah. he sent it to me like, bro, brace yourself. Yeah, yeah. And I tweeted two screenshots, I, and this was my caption on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter at Chingobling. My head hurts trying to make sense of this word salad. <laughs> That's a word salad. That's piss some people Put off. some dressing on that word salad. 100%. It says, proximity to Eurocentricity and whiteness is how our ancestors survived through oppression, a painful legacy that still prevails and needs to be eradicated, Sans said. Although she was shaken by military-grade helicopters that felt like a tornado, she said, the turbulent protest did not stop long overdue discussions about anti-black Latino racism and discrimination. Um, so the article was about... It was basically about that. It was just about, uh, at, you know, a lot of it was the Af Afro-Latino ex talking about the racism within Mexicans against like BLM and African-Americans, and then it led to like other Mexican on Mexican kind of racism and it actually brought up <clears throat> somewhere in that one or another one i read inferiority of like the darker skin or the lighter skin latinas would tell something to a darker you know like oh, i mean i'm looking so aztec or whatever and then the girl was like well that sounds like a real inferiority complex to say something so ridiculous right and then it kind of she go trails on to something else but yeah i, I do read that a lot in I these mean, stories i mean there is a little bit of like no, estás in prieto, way or yeah. something like that. And those that. terms too were like Mexicans should stop using prieto, prieta. You yeah, know, morena, but then there's güero, güeritas. Exactly, there's, yeah. there's you know, uh, Marisol has an uncle named Güero. I have tío güero, tío prieto también. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> everybody has well, at least one tío. Prieto. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So obviously, how many um, how many siblings did your father have? Nine. So it was it was nine of them. Yeah. Some. Same. They're gonna vary. For That's sure. how genetics and works. And it's crazy because, let's see, four of the nine. Or a little bit darker skin, you know what I'm saying? Curly and hair, a curly, super curly Broader hair. Nose. Yeah. And then there's my dad, his other brother. You know, there's the other five. Some who, have Asian eyes. Yeah, like some. One of my aunts is like, soup, she's probably like, you think Maribels are worse than mine? Probably. Yeah, yeah. my aunt Mar my aunt Maribels are probably like pennies. No. Oh. So they're super Asian. So you know. And then Maribel's daughter, who's half black, half Mexican, looks half Asian, half black. Black. Yeah. Wow. Let wrap your brain around yeah. that right? word salad. Mm -hmm. And, the and then her son looks like he's just like a dark, like a Domin like a darker. Yeah, he, he, he could probably pass with Dominican. Dominican, because he doesn't really have like 
You know, he has my aunt's nose. He has my aunt's hair. He has my aunt's eyes. Like, but they grown up in the burbs. Yeah. And so, you know, the chances of them having any weird run-ins with police or any type of systemic anything is very unlikely because mm-hmm. of the household they're raised in, the emphasis on education, the kind of schools they want to put them in. And they have a bright future. Like, yeah, people are going to be fighting over trying to hire these kids. Right. So, and the, the over the overarching theme within all these stories that I was reading recently was that this like oppression again this oppression of like within your community like who's the more oppressed and I know you talked about it a few episodes ago and it's it's infuriating because wouldn't you say that we're all pretty like up on what's going on around the world you think other Latinos that we're related to are really paying attention to all this shit that's being to all this word salad that's being thrown around so this oppression that that people um, you know people throwing around or using it to their advantage or factored into the victim victimhood here's a word I, w- I would like to add it's like a filter to view some of this stuff strategy mm-hmm. so i'll give you an example let's rewind let's talk about marisol's um i guess they're your cousins then right oh. the uh, los, los, los niños the Maribel? yes yeah. mm-hmm. okay so her cousins who are half black right so they can easily pass for black so in the world of if you subscribe to this idea oppression and racism and systemic uh, oppression is is everywhere and you just good luck kids if you're born black good luck i don't know how you're gonna do it because it's systemic and it's everywhere and and trump couldn't fix it biden can't fix it and can't nobody fix it how about we factor in the word strategy which is this um the way they're being raised focus on education what schools you going to yes ma'am no ma'am thank you you're welcome just education as a strategy as to you know you turn in your work on time you fill out the application you walk around with your shoulders back like you're nice to cops in case they pull you over like all these things is a strategy to where you're more likely they're probably going to be able to pick from whatever fortune 500 company that's like we need diversity Mm -hmm. like we're trying to hire y'all so so obviously when you have like nigerian americans they're black Right. But culturally speaking, they might have a strategy that focuses on education, you know, and so on. So well, that's like what our midwife has told us. Right. So mm-hmm. a lot of people from Africa, Nigeria, they'll come they'll come to the States. They'll have their children with the midwife. Right. Because she by law has to register any child that she births. So that she creates the birth certificate, sends in all the info, et cetera. So now that child is a u.s citizen but they just come here so that the child is born here they go back to their country and then when it's time for them to come to college they send them back oh so so on top of strategy you also have like personal accountability personal responsibility so in other words at some point you can't blame your shortcomings on the white man you can't blame your shortcomings on it. It's because I'm rasa fool and don't nobody make it from where I'm from. It's like you probably just need a better strategy. Yeah. So I think this podcast and, and this conversation and everyone in this room hopefully can serve as examples or, or hopefully we can be better leaders one day so that people listening or, or they might take away that where it's like, you know what, regardless of what skin color we are or our kids are, if you have a good strategy and you 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 uh, don't blame others for mm-hmm. everything, it, it's like you can't like what's the excuse? Okay, Oprah, well she rich as hell. Yeah. What happened there? Oh well, there's exceptions. Ti, he rich as hell. What happened there? Oh, there's exceptions. Or even this dude uh, Lalo, Lalo Alcaraz, the the comic, uh, the political cartoonist. Okay, they tried to call me out because mm-hmm. I voted for Trump. Well, he's a millionaire. He's a millionaire making comics, telling Raza that they're oppressed. You're a millionaire. That's like Bernie. Bernie's a fucking millionaire, but he's talking about Bernie Sanders. Away. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Lalo is a millionaire and he makes his money syndicating his car- political cartoons, yeah. which just shit on Trump all day. Yeah. So right now he ain't got shit to draw. <laughs> he ain't got shit to draw right now. <laughs> You're who he's drawing now. I hope so. <laughs> I hope he takes the bait, but just like CNN, they ain't got shit to draw. Yeah. Um, Mighty Soul showed me a, a clip from the Hill, the rising. Okay. Is that the name of the show? The Rising mm-hmm. and um, Sagar. That's his name. I don't know shit today. My yeah, bad, y'all. That's cool. Anyway, the guy 
from the rising he did a whole thing where he's saying the new york times has spent all the last four years catering to their white affluent liberals and basically shitting on trump and not doing any research on what the left is doing i guess he said finally they dusted off their own notebooks and they're like oh who are all these people biden is putting on his little cabinet and it's like corruption galore mm -hmm. but it's like loopholes so it's legal mm -hmm. it's like the person that's supposed to be, uh, I think, Secretary of State or Defense or some shit, like, they have these contracts and these ties, and then they're raising money, and I guess maybe what we should do is on, like, the podcast um, page mm -hmm. or even website, maybe we can put some of that on there. Yeah, yeah for sure. Great, that'd be a great idea, because there's this, also this thing um, from this other guy that I follow, and he posted today. Get up on the um, mic. Huh? Get up on the mic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, uh, he posted today about someone in New York who basically told him to fuck you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not staying in my house. So he, it's this is a New York business owner and former Marine on why he is, um, why he's protesting COVID nineteen mandates. And basically, the caption is, "You may think you're tough, but you'll never." But you'll never be a former Marine ripping up a $15,000 fine for disobeying lockdown orders on live TV after telling off the government and challenging your governor with your patriot friend standing behind you. Tough. This guy's a whole mood. So basically, I saw that video. you yep. did. The guy with the Say beard. Me, Let's check this out. So this guy legit just kind of. I finished kicking him off my property and I opened it up, and it is a fine. So he kicked them off their pro his property. He taped it to the door. I finished kicking them off my property, and I opened it up, and it is a fine for fifteen thousand oh. dollars. Any infringement on our liberty goes too far. We were born with inalienable rights bestowed upon us by our Creator. They are guaranteed by the Constitution, specifically the Bill of Rights, the, the First through Fourteenth Amendments, specifically. Any infringement on our freedom for any reason is too far. Our freedom cannot end where people's fear starts. I plan to take it as far as I possibly can. I want to ask Governor Cuomo and uh, polling cars, I want to ask them, it's a challenge to them. Come to my dinner table. Come to any of the dinner tables back here. Look our kids in the eyes and say, your, your father, your mother is an essential worker. They don't have the guts to do that. They also don't have the guts to answer why they get to draw a $225,000 salary, salary for Governor Cuomo and for polling cars, $103,000 salary, but the working man and woman doesn't get to earn. Mm. They get to take our money, but we don't get to earn. They don't have the uh, guts to tell us that, that the worst kind of leadership. Your story is getting a lot of attention. And um, then he rips it up. Yeah. She rips up and the fine. We'll on post that video on the videos. podcast page. Yeah. Oh, my God. And look at all the people, just all his, like, mm -hmm. friends and, all, you know, pay, uh, just people who are like, you're not going to do. Yeah. And, and, guys, that's what's going what's, what's gonna to start to happen. They're going to start having control over what is our right? That's what people don't understand. It's our right. Mm -hmm. Come and take you know? it, people. <laughs> and, and you know what I can't stand also is people who make comments who are probably super duper young and it may have only been their second time voting. Not, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they're not even old enough yet. Or to, first. To, um, or their first. Secondly, they probably don't even have a job, so they don't pay taxes, so they have mm. no idea how that shit works. They're probably still being claimed by their parents. They probably got indoctrinated in college and university. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So stuff like that, when you're going to come at me and try to challenge what I'm talking about, I'm going to need you to have been on earth just a little bit longer and um, have had a job that was a real job where you got like insurance from the job that you had to pay for, not on your parents' insurance yeah. or like you're not still dependent on your parents. When you become an independent individual where you understand how things really work in the world, that's when I feel like be involved, but don't be a, don't be a follower just because you see that at school, they're teaching you to be a certain way. And then you have grown ass people that probably, to their to their credit like oh i watch a ton of news chingo i'm very informed but you're trapped in this world where basically there's orange man hitler you believe he said drink bleach um you know you don't know shit about what's going on with china and you just kind of like watch cnn you have no idea what the other side of the argument is paris climate accord sounds great to you you know you don't know about these middle east peace treaties you don't know the importance of energy independence you just think yeah, we need to go electric with our cars. And yeah, all the tanks need to have solar panels on top. <laughs> and we could just get invaded and shit. And they never factor in the economy to anything. And all they do, this, I, I might be generalizing, but there's a whole bunch of people that just 
assume shit. They're just like, oh, typical, voted for Trump, vendido sell out. That's what happens when you make money, and that's because you're in this tax bracket, and you did it all because taxes. It's like, no, when I, when I go on people's, uh, if I'm going to go on someone's podcast or something, and I have to kind of give some reasons and shit, I'm not even going to mention taxes because yeah. it's at the bottom. of. I mean, yeah, it's important. Sure. But there's so much other shit. Yeah, nobody that's paying taxes has ever said to themselves, man, how can I pay more? How can yeah. I pay more in taxes? You got to understand hey. that. As, and as it is, it's like, who wants to pay them anyway? Yeah. You know what I mean? If you have so a good CPA, like, you want somebody that's going to help you pay less taxes. Exactly. Well, I heard Thomas Sowell, mm-hmm. Sowell, Sowell, Sowell heard, yeah. Thomas Sowell, he explained um, economics in terms of when you, tr- he says it's symbolic and it sounds cool. Like, yay, we're going to tax the rich. He says, what ends up happening is they just figure out how to hide their money, move it around, not pay those taxes. So then, you know, what happens is like all this shit that sounds cool, like, yay, $15 minimum wage, yay. But it's like, oh, well, now there's less small business. You're hurting the entrepreneur. Now there's less jobs. So the dude that went to college and he probably could have been competing for a, you know, $100,000 job or some shit. Those jobs don't exist. So now he has to settle for the $15 an hour. And you know what I'm saying? So basically, I guess it, it might be a form of trickle down economics or something. But he's saying that when you try to tax the rich like crazy, the way Democrats are proposing, it sounds good to the middle class and the lower class because we're like, fuck, yeah, tax those motherfuckers. But what happens is now you're just going to move, make them move to another country or move their businesses, take the jobs elsewhere, not pay the taxes. And then let's say a California that has a budget and they need to pay for all these social services and take right. care of the homeless and, and all this type of stuff. Well, the rich left, they're not paying. And the middle class. So now stuck. who's going to pay? Yeah. Yep. You, motherfucker. Yeah. And another thing is that, like, let's just say Amazon, for instance. People always point out Amazon. If they don't have that money to reinvest, let's just say that they do find ways to circumnavigate paying a bunch of taxes. It goes back into Amazon. They hire more people. They build more facilities. They have more product that goes out. It goes back to the working class again. But people don't look at it that way. They're like, you have way too much money. You shouldn't have all that money. Well, AOC ran off thousands of jobs when she wanted to she be... ran them off, right? She wanted to be so gung-ho because she's so anti-billionaire because that's what neo-Marxists How are. much money does she make, though? Yeah, right? <laughs> I don't know, but Thank you. she's so anti... Look that, look that she's so anti-billionaire because she's neo-Marxist, like a mug. Someone's like, no, she's not. She go, whatever. You know what I mean. She basically... I don't know if she helped write some shit, but she bitched out Amazon and was like, no, you're not going to come to New York City. And yeah. she says, you don't make a billion dollars. You take a billion dollars. Like basically like anybody that has money, they fucking stole it somehow. And and here's a little trick people do. And I put it on my Twitter. It says um, a lot of times when they try to make it seem like, let's say it's a social justice movement. They try to make it seem like they're targeting, uh, like they're helping the poor. This is all in favor of the poor because we want to help the poor. And, and this is to help poor people. A lot of times they just hate rich people. Yeah. So especially these politicians that are like not really poor. They're just kind of like upperly mobile, middle, upper middle, or, or like a Bernie even because, you know, he's got money. I'm sure AOC ain't mm, completely broke. Exactly. But folks like that that preach... Yay, yay, help the poor, help the poor, help the poor. Really, it's just we fucking hate the rich, hate the rich, hate the rich. And how much of that is envy? How much jealousy is out there and factored into people's opinions? And a lot of those people actually come from money, though. A lot of the people that want to tax or, you know, let's let's do like socialist type of strategy or even uh, like the uh, who was it? The 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 communist manifesto, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. Karl Marx and whatever his partner was. His partner came from a pretty wealthy family. So when you look at people that always try to spouse that ideology actually come from money. So isn't that ironic? You know what else I learned? That George Orwell was kind of socialist. Hmm. George Orwell was kind of socialist because at the time in the UK, uh, he saw how the miners were so fucked up, like their teeth were fucked up, that by age 30, they done lost all their teeth. And um, basically, it was one of those things where it's like, you can't help but feel for, you know, the, right. the lower class and stuff. So anyway, off subject. I, I, it, to me, I'm just like so, I'm honestly so over this. I want them just to figure it out already. I know it's going to take longer. Rob Keats told me 
Just wait till December 8th. Supreme yeah. Court. Yeah. December 8th is just taking too long for me. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to tell, the, just like all the negative comments that keep getting left on my TikTok, right? Because obviously all the ones that were leaving them on my Instagram, I've blocked, right? I'm new to TikTok. So, mm. you know, now they're on there. But anyhow, um, you know, th- what people don't understand is stop being mad. You know what I'm saying? Get off your ass and let's and figure out how we're going to make it through this. Because if they decide to do another fucking lockdown, how are you going to feed your family? Have you thought uh, yeah. about that? They want to give you a check from the government. And make they're it not, socialist. though. They're, they said they're not going to do a stimulus check. So how are these people <laughs> going to survive? Well, how are these businesses going to survive? No, know. they're not. Yeah. And they and it's and it breaks my heart industries, to see whole industries. People who have used their life savings to to start and open their startup, their restaurant, their Brick and mortar. whatever, you know what I'm saying? They they they've envisioned for however long and then this is going to just ruin it. Not only that, now they they no longer provide jobs like you, we're talking about mm-hmm. to anyone. Yeah. They, they're going to lose everything. What's going to be next? They're going to put a lien on their house to keep their business open? Or do they live in their house and figure out how they're going to make mortgage? I mean, you know what I'm saying? These are decisions that people who, you know what I'm saying, are average middle class individuals are going to have to start thinking about. And then, you know, what's worse <laughs> if you live in a blue state and on top of all that shit you just mentioned, they're just playing games with y'all. They're not telling you the mortality rate. They're just coming up with these little rules that don't apply to them. You know, it's Orange County, Yellow County, Red County. And well, those tickers, too, that they have, you know, the coronavirus tickers or whatever, that's such a, like you always talk about, too, it's a psychological thing. If we had a ticker for everybody that died uh, in a car accident, you never get into a car again, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. it's constantly mm-hmm. playing Visual. this fear mm-hmm. game with you. Yeah, it's yeah I'm, I'm over it, and um, I'm really over it because... If the only thing you have to do at home is to be trolling on the internet, then you should probably use that same energy. You like we probably talk about worry about your diabetes, how, how you're going to maybe improve your health, how you're going to be a better parent, Make sure how you're going to be a better ashy. husband, wife, uh, maybe figure out how you're going to figure open up a new business. Some of the cats is hating on me. You might want to figure out your little rap career or something like that. You know, how, how you it's just to little things like that. It's like, it amazes me. Like, Obviously, I'm replying to these people, but when I reply, it's because I'm probably not doing anything. Yeah. But Jesus Christ, if you're doing this all day, I'm starting to wonder what what you do. Like, I'm going to hire you then so that you can reply to all my trolls because you obviously... <laughs> I need you to help me block people. Yeah, because yeah, right? like, you obviously have a lot of time on your hands. So let me uh, pay you to come on my inter- on my fucking page and start Dude. blocking and deleting comments because it's you, a job of its own. You know what hashtag I'm excited about? Hashtag Chingo warned y'all. So it's inevitable that there will be gaffes. Let's just say Biden wins, right? <laughs> People are like, but he did. Ah. Nope. Yeah, not yet, motherfucker. So let's just say there's going to be gaffes. There's going to be more and more corruption. CNN might turn on Biden. Uh, Lalo still ain't going to have his shit to draw because he's not going to fucking all these uh, left leaning newspapers aren't going to publish his shit. They got him by the nuts. Um, but all these gaps and all these things that are happening, we'll be able to remind people like hashtag Chingo warned y'all. So like you're going to see some fuck shit going on and you voted for the fuck shit. Yeah. And if, uh, so there's a couple of things that could still happen, right? Today is, uh, November 30th, last day of November, right? We still have about a week and a half before things start popping off in December as far as certifications. But if states can't certify their votes, let's say that, that, uh, you know, like PA, Arizona, wherever, Massachusetts, don't certify those votes so nobody gets 270. You know, right now, I think the, the AP has Biden at like 290 or some shit, which none of those are certified. They're just they're just projections, right? Mm. If all of those, mm. if nobody gets 270, then you go to, uh, to uh, House delegations or state delegations, basically, where every state gets one vote. And there's more Republican states than there are Democrat states. So Trump wins, again, via technicality. And that's when the chaos really starts because you stole the elections, what you're going to hear for four years. Well, hey, we got the Second Amendment, so you can act a fool. Yeah, However but you, you know what? It, it's like there's no winning. And um, so what are so so the thing is, is that you've yet to see a Trump supporter out damaging anything, though, right? No, they're filing lawsuits. You know, they're praying on one knee in front of uh, cler- clerical offices. Well, so uh, I guarantee you when Trump wins, right, when they announce that he technically won this election, you know, assuming that, you know, everything gets verified and what so forth. Um, what's going to end up happening is we're going to see Antifa again. 
We're going to see riots again. We're going to see businesses like just ready I, to board up their I might windows. Have, I might have a new PS5 if that happens. <laughs> Join in. Fuck it. But you know what's funny, man? What kind of reputation do the Proud Boys have? Because, boy, the comments are like, sell your fucking tamales to the Proud Boys, you fucking racists, or whatever, whatever. And it's like, okay, I don't know a whole bunch about the Proud Boys, but from what I've heard, they just kind of wait for you to punch them first, and then they beat the fuck out of you, or something like that. But it's, it's like, they're not all white. I think the main dude is like Afro Latino yeah, or yeah, some he shit. Is, yeah. And it's like they don't fit the stereotype narrative that they try to put like they're like a KKK. It's like pull up footage of of, uh, of these proud boys burning some shit, looting some shit, tearing some shit, spray painting some shit. Show it to me. And if, and I mean maybe you could verify if, or if they really proud boys or not. But it's, you know. And then you got to wonder like you know how how we a lot of people have said, yeah, I just you know, I didn't like Trump, so I voted for Biden, right? Yeah. So, so now what's going to happen? What do you mean? So now you voted for this person that you yeah. don't even know what he's going to do for. <laughs> that's, that's the low information voters right. we're talking about. And, and that's that graph we pulled up last uh, last episode where it's like, if I had only known right. all these negative things about Biden, like shit that he's currently in hot water for, and all, and if I had known all these great things Trump was doing for, for the American people, sorry to break it to y'all, uh, Chicanos, Pochos, Mexican Americans, whatever you call yourself. If you was born here and you got your papers, you American. Yeah. So don't get all on this. You forgot about your raza, bitch. You American too, ho. <laughs> because I don't see you moving to fucking El Salvador or wherever you from, Mm-mm. Guatemala, Honduras, wherever. Um, on the last episode, we talked a lot about uh, Jorge Ramos and his. Mm-hmm. Do-, do you know? Who, did you know Paola Ramos was? Did you know she? I don't his, really his keep his daughter. Up. Yeah. No, I don't really know. I saw that here recently. I've seen Bruh. more about it on, and actually, where I've seen it was, I saw it on the Latino. Oh. Somebody so I what follow, about but anyway, what she did some fucked up shit, right? Well, what she she's like super into the uh, Latin X. Is it Latin X or Latinx? Whatever it is, right? It's fucking retarded. So she wrote a book, uh, and I have it right here. It's Finding Latin X in Search of the Voices Redefining uh, Identity. I mean, I don't know what Latinos are trying to read, identify, or ident- anyway. And uh, she has a series. I don't know if that was a book, but anyway, I read something about it. And then she does a lot of uh, Vice videos where she does, and I'll send them to you guys, and you guys can look them up. She hosts a show where she talks to left leaning, right leaning people about why they voted for Trump and why they didn't. And when you host a show like that, you let the, the people kind of go back and forth and debate, right? She was literally, it was like she was on the side of everybody on the left, just going at the people that were trying to rebuttal people that were part of the show so that's kind of you kind of see where she lies and then we talked about her working for hillary what she did she was part of like the latino media Mm -hmm. whatever whatever division for hillary clinton and you know people some people were like ah jorge ramos is like he's uh he's the walter cronkite basically of of the like our time of for Mm. united states journalists you know from mexican and descent or whatever but it's hard to avoid what some of those trickle down kind of affiliations might have right you might not want to admit it but you're probably right he's more of a sellout at the end of the day than shingle bling is well like i was saying man i feel like we're going to be vindicated with the hashtag chingle warned y'all <laughs> yeah. because you know they might not be up on this like so what did jorge ramos do or what did his daughter do or who do they work for or what is this stuff but at the end of the day man it's inevitable like whether Trump wins, that's going to be an opportunity to fucking post one of my songs to fucking Trump dancing. You know, chicka boom boom, baby boom boom. It's or like your girl, though. Chrissy Teigen and uh, John Legend, they're like, fuck Trump. No, no, no. Like, you I didn't see that, that, that video? Yeah, I she's got her them. eyes closed yeah. and her fucking eyebrows are all stupid. Yeah. <laughs> they were just on the couch, I think, and they were just like, fuck Trump. Uh, uh, uh. You know, they're just her like and, dancing. Her and Don Lemon. <laughs> Don Lemon. <laughs> yeah. You know what you can say? So, it's ridiculous oh, because pussy. you know that any other president would never be disrespected like that. And yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's very bizarre. It's 2020, and um, I don't know. I almost feel like if you're out there saying like fuck, fuck Trump or whatever, that's almost like you should, I don't know, get fined well, for that. Well, I'll put it to you like this. No, free speech myself. So we don't want to resort to that. I yeah, mean, that's true. That's Jesus left type Christ. Shit. Like. It's just very, it's just, just getting more, it's getting so but, ridiculous. But I can't anymore. Factor this in. So. I'm not even been posting because I can't stand to get on social <laughs> media because I know that something's going to pull up Yeah. and I'm just going to be like, oh. Well, look, you have to factor this in. What percentage of these people that are on some fuck Donald Trump, whatever, 
believe the hoaxes, you know, believe he said all Mexicans are rapists, um, and factor in the media. So it's some of these folks, you really can't blame them. Like, a lot of the heat that I'm getting... That's true. A lot of the heat that I'm getting, I can't help that you're... Not everybody, but I'm just going to say, I don't know, 80% of these motherfuckers are low information. They just go based on, hey, homie, I already know what I need to know, big dog. Orange man bad, Biden's for la raza. That's all I need to know, and I'm going to vote accordingly, and you're a fucking vendido. And it's like... Can we get into some of the details? Can we get more nuanced about it? Is it really that simple? Yeah, homie, orange man, bad. Biden for la raza. They be acting like Biden's from fucking Michoacan and shit. And Kamala's from fucking Sinaloa or something. Because they're like, oh, hey, homie, you sold out on your people. And how dare you vote for that white man? And it's like... And uh, again... Uh, what color is the man you voted for? Yeah, they're, right. they're all white guys. Uh, but shout out to everybody on the What Did He Said pod- podcast page. Like sending DMs, like the support, answering the questions, giving us your ideas and, and suggestions for topics and whatever. For really sticking up for Tingo for sure. Thank you, dog. And then the people <laughs> that were like, they're just saying what you said. Like, hey, he's like, bro, I appreciate what you're doing. Almost like saying, you're not going to help a lot of these people change their mind. And it's not that they we're trying to change their mind, but it's almost like, you want to talk about voting as a civic duty? This is almost like a civic duty in its own, just educating people mm, on man. this. Informing. Let me piggyback off that. Okay. Informing, Rob. Yeah. So, so listen, listen. Um, civic duty. Okay. Like we said last time, it's easy for somebody to just be like right wing or conservative or just be like, hey, well, not I wouldn't say easy, but it's a, it's one level of like courage. But to already have some shit going on, to already have a, a predominantly Mexican American uh, fan base, I felt the civic duty to be like. Man, I can't just, you know, sleep at night knowing that I didn't at least tell motherfuckers, hey, y'all, I know this sounds crazy, but uh, Biden full of shit. And this dude, he he seems crazy because everybody thinks he's fucking Hitler. But can I talk to you about some of the shit he's doing? And you know what I thought about when you got that, babe? Civic duty. Exactly. I thought about that later as this thing is unraveling and people just can't stop calling a sellout. You know what would have been cool is like uh, you doing a little series on YouTube of you going into this like rabbit hole and join me and read this part of the book that you're reading. Join me. Let me show you where this information is yeah. going. Where there, where where it probably would have been more like, what is that real? You mean like or leading like, up to it? Le- like, like leading up to it? Yeah. Like if we could go back in time, exactly. Not like literally right yeah. now, but if we could go back in time, just to you know. Um, I kind of like it this way. <laughs> let it explode yeah. in people's face let them get super high emotional and then retrospectively like oh for the ones that aren't just vendido coconut the ones that are like i'm confused but let me see what the fuck you talking about yeah like somebody put you know he's pulling the colby covington you know uh branding for towards trump mm-hmm. and blah 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 gaining new followers or whatever i don't wear the hat one don't identify with any person or party. We've never said that particularly. We're just talking about pros and cons, right? And also, I, I saw it and wanted to say, what about Jorge, Jorge Masvidal? Masvidal had nothing to gain from this when it comes to popularity in his audience. He's Cuban. He's from Miami. And he was at the helm of that Florida fucking rally. Mm-hmm. So wait, wait, what do you mean by that? Like, well, people saying that you're trying to pull a Colby Covington. Uh-huh. You know, like just you're but trying what, to. But pander. what about Masvidal though? He didn't have anything to gain. That's what I'm saying. You also, you already had something going on, right? Oh, you're trying okay, to educate okay, okay. your fans. Your oh, community. in other words, like Jorge isn't lying. He really feels that. Yeah, way. exactly. And he's really trying to be honest and authentic. Yeah, he said that several times. Like, I, this is damaging to my career and my my fan base. But what, like he, and a big part for him was like his dad said, having come from Cuba, like. That's not right. You got to use your platform, son, to tell the people. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and and he talks about Bro, that openly. I mean, I I can't wait to. I got so much shit going on, but when I can, I try to sneak in like, like I'm. I, I still haven't finished that book, uh, Twelve Rules to Life by Jordan ben Peterson. Peterson. I'm skipping around, and there's one chapter where he's talking about Orwell and socialism, and he touches upon some of these things, even though the book's not about that. But he'll say he'll 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 say. I think he's the one that said. Yeah, a lot of these folks, they try to, like, pander and make it seem like they're out to help the poor. He's like, really, they just hate the rich. Yeah. And factor in a little bit of envy and jealousy into some of this stuff. Um, but I don't know what it's what is it going to take for people to, like, snap out of this media hypnotism. Mm. 
it's almost like there needs to be a, a, a radical shift. Like it's almost like mainstream media needs to lose a little bit more credibility in the eyes of the normal American, just the regular, like, Oh, I don't really pay attention to stuff. I, I just thought orange man bad. Like it, something's going to cause the tipping point where they're going to start looking at Obama different. They're going to start looking at Jorge Ramos different. They're going to start looking at CNN and Tele Univision different. Like it feel like you're not really telling me everything. And one of the clips you made, uh, I don't think it's in the Dropbox yet, but one of the clips you made, you put the graphic, I think Marisol was speaking, and it said, um, I'm speaking, it said, it said at the top something like, and now it's our time to tell, now it's the news' turn to tell you guys what to do. Oh, right, to, to carefully cite, like, sift through the, the today's schedule of the program. Yeah, and, and that's, that is what it is, right? We've all seen, or at least you should have seen by now, compilations of news networks from around the country with the same, like the six o'clock news, and it's literally verbatim, almost the same line and the same you know way of talking all day, all throughout the country. Like, why does everybody say the exact same words, the exact same way? Well, I posted that, and somebody tried to fact check me. They're like, Chingo, here you go again with your misinformation. They said all those news things that are in that, and we like to care about the blah, 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 valley, the blah, 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 community, blah, 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 and it's all like syncing up. He said those are all Sinclair owned and they all and they tend to lean right. And if you look at the script of what was being said, they were talking about fake news. Mm -hmm. So it, I'm like, oh, maybe he is right. But it doesn't excuse the fact that this is the way it works. There are media conglomerates. Yeah. And it's a high concentration of power. Like Clear Channel owns most of the billboards in America, not to mention all the radio stations. But. It just becomes more efficient to hire one DJ out of Houston. And when he's done doing his San Jose, California, da, 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 he's going to Phoenix, Arizona, da, 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 Sacramento. Blah, blah, blah. And you had to pay one motherfucker. Yeah. But you're using him for uh, he's on from noon to three in all these markets. And then he might do one morning and then he might have one weekend overnight shift or whatever. But it's just the nature of. Um, it's the magic trick of media. You know, you, you write one script, you yeah. send it out to all your affiliates, and but it, it doesn't excuse the fact that regardless of their left-leaning or right-leaning, they could be kind of brainwashing you. Yeah, and to piggyback off what you said as far as the credibility, if, if and when, I, I still think it's going to happen, Trump pulls this off, right, that's going to be the avalanche of all credibility lost because the, the pollsters already lost credibility in 2016, and they really lost credibility this year because all the polls were wrong. Yeah, all the polls are wrong. They're wrong because when you call a Trump supporter house and say, hey, who are you going to vote for? They want to troll you, Yeah. and they don't want you to know that yep. yeah, when it's going to be a landslide. When I would get those those texts, I'd be fucking with them. Like when I would get Democrat texts, like, more, did you vote? She's, she's, I reply, four more years. Four more years. And they'd get so mad. They'd reply, can you tell us why you've considered to vote uh, uh, Republican? And I said, four more years. Stop texting me. For real. And then I was like, so it's then country, huh? after I voted, yeah, yeah. this was what yeah. was crazy. After I went to go vote. Then I started getting texts from the Republicans where uh, it was more like sending you information about what was going on. So I thought, what is happening mm. here? You know what I'm saying? Like, who is doing this? Like, and it was bad information about Trump. Interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of Republicans, too, like that Lincoln Project. Yep. You know, I want to say this before I forget. When Trump first hit the scene, obviously, I wasn't feeling him, right? He started throwing out all this stuff about your fake news. Go back to Univision. Your fake news. Fake news. The uh, the press is the enemy of the people. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is dangerous. Like, cause I'm watching fucking Trevor Noah and CNN, all these assholes. Fucking hate Trevor. And it's Noah. like I hated him since day one when he was Fuck trying Trevor. to tell me like, oh, you should. Uh, he's he's really interested. I'm like, I just can't get him. Well, I, I had, just don't I had like his him. Audio book. <laughs> talking about how he grew up and shit. But anyway, um, here's my point. He started throwing out all this stuff about fake news, fake news, fake news, and I'm like. Man, what the fuck is this dude talking about, man? This weirdo. And then you start to see that the news is fake, and it's like, <sighs> it's like funny how Santa Claus isn't real. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is kind of a situation like that. Yeah. Bro, if you're in the car, please don't yeah. let your kids listen to this. Man, literally like Morpheus in the Matrix, holding out the the red pill and yep. the blue pill. Bro, with all this all this stuff about virtual reality, simulation theory, how there may be just one creator that created this universe that whatever this is we're in already aged. So you're going to have, you, you'll find some fossils, but that's okay. It's like, I'll, it's like a video game. Like 
if you're not in that part of the world, if you're not on that stage three, we're not going to waste computing power. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So my, my point is this, is that I don't know, maybe when you die, you find out everything. But whenever the fuck we find out everything, it's just going to be mind blowing. Like when you literally take that pill and it's like, oh, everything is fake. Like they've trained us to look at everything through the filter of race, racism, skin color, Latinx, and all this bullshit. And it's like, there's a lot of real motherfuckers that don't match your skin tone. Like mm. there's people you're going to hit it off with. And hopefully that's a takeaway to where don't be afraid to venture outside of your community and date outside your community, have friends outside your community, explore outside your community because sure there's a lot of positivity in our culture and being proud and and yes, we should definitely celebrate and uh, and uphold and represent and cuz that's part of me, that's part of you, that's what makes you you. That's identity. But don't let it be to a fault mm -hmm. to where you're beholden and now you're scared to be called a vendido, a coconut. You, you have to vote for Biden. You have to be Democrat. No, 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 no. I don't give a damn. TikTok could kick me off tomorrow. Facebook could kick me off tomorrow. I don't make my money off social media. I mean, this shit don't make or break me. You're not going to have me by the nuts. If anything, this is great for my career. Everyone's been, oh, I'm watching a, the, the downfall. Yes, yeah, uh, right. we're watching a career. Uh, da, da, da. No, 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 no. No, this is the third act. This is a plot twist. And the people that get it, I'm not I'm not doing like, oh, he's just want to be conservative or Republican, whatever the fuck, because he's just trying to like troll us. No, it's just, this is part of life. You evolve. Like if, like if, if, um, it's almost like if God is like, all right, I'm going to make, I'm, I'm going to choose this kid, right? And he's going to be on some, they can't deport us all shit. And some of these extreme conservative people are going to, Michelle Malkin, that was her name. She's going to call him out on Fox News and, you know, he's going to get all this hate for this billboard. They can't deport us all, blah, 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 blah. But then I'm going to let him see some other stuff and he's going to free a lot of people mentally. I'm not, I'm not We're on, on some, some Kanye shit I'm not right on now. some Harriet Tubman. We're on Tubman. some Kanye shit Look, right I'm now. I'm not on some Harriet like Tubman it. shit. But if you think about it, I'm looking at my old photos on that wall. And who would have thought that kid with the grill is going to be schooling people about certain shit? Like, hey, y'all, look, I'm about as real as they come. But believe me when I tell you this, the news, most of it's full of shit. Yeah. They're no longer just saying there was an accident on 34th and 19th Street and, you know, a dog was rescued over here and, and bundle up, guys. It might get cold. No, 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 no. It's fucking bias as a motherfucker. They're excluding things on purpose. They're choosing what they want to focus on. And you don't have to believe me if you don't want to. I ain't got shit to gain. But at the end of the day, I will be vindicated. Hashtag Chingo warned y'all. Mm -hmm. And there will be some shit that you're going to... If I planted a seed in some of y'all's minds, that that motherfucking seed has been planted. And it's just a matter of time to where you're going to start looking at shit slightly different because reality is subjective. Everybody lives in their own little reality. Everybody mm -hmm. views things through their filter. Some people put on their little filter, see themselves a certain way, and they see me as a fucking bendido. But the reality of it is that's not that's not the case. I like it. That was that was like I, I feel that is a clip. I feel yeah, like yeah, Kanye yeah. was talking right now, but like the Latino, you know, Kanye. I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. Well, to it people. just means I'm all over the place and I ramble. <laughs> it, it just means that if I go to the doctor, I don't know what kind of medicine they're gonna give me. I don't know if they're gonna let me leave. None. You're gonna have to refuse all of it. You can't yeah, medicate this can't kind medicate of genius. Yeah. Like strap strap him down to that gurney. Yeah. <laughs> On the inside, she is. Mighty's <laughs> <all> yeah, <laughs> she's laughing just like that too. <laughs> He's no, finally. Like, She's like, I should have did this while his career was popping because <laughs> now he's a vendido. Uh, nah, I always have your back and you know that. I know so, that, baby. Um, and, she, she, and, but, you know, and like I, we said this last time, um, he doesn't dictate the way I think. And Actually, not to interrupt you, but somebody did ask, how do you, how, how he, someone, the question was like, how good does it feel or how do you get to a point where your spouse, uh, you know, relates to you politically? But you guys, like you said from the jump, you weren't really quite there yet, right? You I wasn't took your there time. when he was um, when he was kind of feeding me what was happening. For, to me, it was still like because we kind of like this whole George Floyd thing. He tried to give me the facts, and I'd be like, "No." I saw what I needed to see. Yeah, Pandas. and I was like, "No, you know that's not you. You can't look at it that way." Um, I guess because I am a Libra, for me, it's all about fairness and 
She's I like, wouldn't. I don't want to see any body cam footage. I don't want to see no toxicology report. Yeah, I mean, it was literally like that. It was like, yeah. you can't say that. It What is wrong is wrong. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, it's You didn't want to hear that he died from the fentanyl, not from the knee on the neck? Well, I think he, it was both. It was one, one di- ha- had one and the other well, one. When it goes it, to court and the jury and they show them the body cam footage and they see the toxicology report... And they have the, um, what are the people, the coroner, yeah. and all these, I mean, from what I, from what I could tell, they're, he's, he's probably gonna get off light. Yeah. A little slap on the wrist. Yeah. Well, I, I know po- some police officers who already think that, and yeah. that's, I think. Because you we, have to prove intent. You, yeah, yeah, exactly. And you can't. Right. No way. There's no way. There's no, yeah, because he was know? intending to kill Chauvin him. is an idiot, but he did show up late and last. He, he, homeboy was already saying, put me on the ground. Right. He was already saying, I can't breathe. Yeah. Back when it was just one cop there. And he's like, whoa, whoa, take it easy, buddy. Are you on something? No, nah, no. Nah. If he'd have said, look, man, I, I took all this fence and all, you might want to call an ambulance. Yeah. He went through excited delirium, mm-hmm. which is a condition that happens when you're on that wet or embalming fluid or something. And um, anyway. Yeah. Don't want to Yeah, that was a, always our, you know, I, and I'd even tell him, I'm like, just stop right now. Like, let's stop talking about it because, you know. I was like, all right, Marisol, he's gonna, <laughs> the cops are going to get off. I'm, I'm just like, telling you, get dude, ready. I was like, stop telling me that. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I still don't agree with a lot of the way that stuff was handled. But I'm also not against police officers because you couldn't pay me to do that job. Oh, I'm no. sorry. It is one of the hard... I can't imagine every morning when you walk out the door, you have, I mean, that's anybody because we can have a car accident on our way to work, but that's their job. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they, they have to put themselves in those situations. We choose to kind of, you know, what kind of, what situation you want to be in, you know, but they don't have a choice. They'll go answer whatever call it is. And they don't know if it's going to be a crazy ass, if it's going to be something that's going to be somebody with a knife. They have no idea. Somebody butt naked. For me, I'm True. never against a police officer because, you know, of course, like in anything, there are dicks, there are police officers. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like in anything. But Jesus, there's certain jobs, right, that I just feel are just, you know, we don't pay them enough. Mm-hmm. You know, firefighters, and police officers, it's very- military. Look at, look at, just pay attention to what jobs these are. Teachers, firefighters, military police officers all jobs that serve purpose Mm -hmm. all jobs that help all jobs all of them got a union (laughs) all of them chose a candidate they're supposed to upbring the community you know there it's just like it's awful because i just don't understand why the hardest job ever again our tax dollars is not helping i blame the media for this anti-police rhetoric for sure they're working hand in hand with these Fucking punk ass politicians. Excuse me if you have kids in the car. Um, the media is is a culprit in this. They're uh, uh, complicit in all of this. They're pushing an agenda, anti police rhetoric for their benefit for their p- politics, which is, hey, uh, we know we know Trump and all his little Trumper people. They like to back the police and stuff. And neo Marxists, they want to disrupt that anyway. And if you factor it in on a larger scale of on some deep state type shit, you want to take our guns away. Like Biden said, oh, you're bingo. He said, bingo, we're coming for your guns and we're coming for your AR-15s. Everybody clap. Oh, my God, Joe Biden. He's so good. And uh, so, yeah, after you take take away the guns and then you get rid of cops and you bending over backwards trying to free criminals and you spending all this money on the homeless like obviously the homelessness, that's an issue. And obviously we do have to spend money. But. In some cases, it seems like the left is overboard. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Fact check me. Maybe I'm looking at the world through a weird lens. But for me, from my perspective, as a 41-year-old ma- uh, uh, married with kids and shit, I see the left and the mainstream media playing this dangerous game of anti-police rhetoric. And they're not respecting them. They're disrespecting them. They're getting shot at. Um, and that's, that's one of the most polarizing points that anytime people come at me with their little his her they in their bio and and chicanix latinx blm blah 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 blah. usually i hit them with do you back the police and that's when they're like oh well (laughs) (laughs) having a seizure on you so 2009 kamala harris uh if we take a show of hands of those that would like to see more police officers on the street mine would shoot up 2009 2020 and you just made it back joe 
This is that. There's always a part of the episode where, where Joe, Joe comes in. Yeah, this should be a, like a. You bit. love to hear it. Oh my dog. 2020. It's the status quo thinking to believe that putting more police on the street creates more safety. That's just wrong. All right, cool, man. You're also How do you a cop. not think that that's going to be more safety? Guys, these these neighborhoods that, you know, have a lot of crime, they need more cops and we don't have enough of them. Yeah. And <clears throat> a lot of times also, <coughs> you know, I think also if you paired a non whatever sub whatever neighborhood you're working in, whether it be a predominantly Latino or predominantly white or predominantly black, I think there needs to be a one in one. One white cop, one black cop that goes in there together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? One whatever cop and one to go in because that way no one can say, oh, they're just in here being racist or right. they're in here attacking me because I'm black. Or, hey, oh, wow, yeah. dope. Want to hold that one? Mm-hmm. That's Texas Orange. Here goes the Pacific Blue. Bingo. Come here, Joe Biden. Okay, now this is the wrong shade of green, right? It's a Christmas green. This is the wrong shade. Of green. I think yeah. this is Kelly green. So we're gonna. I'm gonna go back. I ordered the wrong color. Exclusive it, for the podcast listeners here. Oh, so we're yeah. You guys, you guys see it first. Cards? One step at a time, because I have a lot of merch got designed. There's uh, sticker packs. There's air fresheners. There's a damn beach towel. There's a blanket. <laughs> there's masks, and I'm trying to get everything done. But uh, but this is an exclusive for you guys um, that are watching. If you go to chingobling.com, you get an album with this with the hoodies. You get an album with it. The Versace Mariachi, the merch is in. I finally get to rock it. You know, I was a little sidetracked blocking people. That's why I got behind on some of my other work. Because mm, obviously, it's like, they okay. make it hard to block. Yeah. But anyway, I just wanted no, to. No, but anyway, uh, yeah, we can call it a podcast there, guys. We got other stuff to tend to anyway. We hit an hour. We got another uh, one or two podcasts coming up this week anyway. And if you guys want it to keep going, want the, to see. The next episode, we're going to go over how they can do that. Okay. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So this Astro. this right here is episode six? This is episode six. So this is episode the midpoint. Seven. Yeah, this is the midpoint. This is the midpoint. an hour already? Yeah. Wow, that went by fast. Enough. This is the midpoint. And again, please let us know what kind of topics, like what specific things are important to you. I mean, from time, we jump around a lot, but we tend to touch upon like things like the economy, how the media might be lying to you, who the real vendidos are. Um, I love the clip when I went off on uh, Latino Hollywood. Yeah. People were like, fuck yeah, somebody finally had to say it. Because it was a good motherfucking point, which is I'm tired of all this crybaby shit. Crying over crumbs. We need to be building a bread truck. Um, the album is out. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Uh, been getting great feedback. Uh, we have an album release party December 10th in San Antonio, Texas. Mm-hmm. That's exclusive to everybody listen to the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're very excited about that. I have some artists coming in from L.A. for that. And we're looking forward to touring the country again and seeing some new faces. Yeah. Because obviously a lot of my closed minded fans, which weren't going to the shows anyway, uh, they're not, you know, they're probably not on board anymore because they heard what they needed to hear. Mm-hmm. Orange Man Bad. Uh, but yeah, we love the feedback. Make sure you follow at Rob, Rob GTV. Rob GTV at at it's money Solerera, and only follow me only if you positive could. only positive because you finna get blocked and i'm finna go upside your head yeah and so don't follow me if you are not going to be a positive patty and my boy uh, at bros of 15 he, on the tiktok game you know what i'm talking about yeah we we be killing it on tiktok he literally watched me cuss motherfuckers out as i'm blocking them <laughs> i'm like oh pussy look at you old bitch like you know, because they're just, and now I figured out how to put the, the keywords to where you can't just type coconut. Yeah. Facebook, I don't think, I don't know. I have to, you can. You can? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So now they have to get creative. They can't just type sell out. No. They can't just type vendido. Yeah. You know, you're going to have to work hard pimping. Yeah. Or yeah. just educate yourselves and uh, hop on board. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Facts. Thank you guys for tuning in. Y'all be safe. Have a good one. Stay blessed.